We've come to Cape Town, one of Africa's most vegan-friendly destinations, and we're on our way to our eco-friendly accommodation at Rosie's, situated in Loba. Welcome, I'm Rosie from At Rosie's in Tableview, Blauberg, and we're a kite house that accommodates people for different budgets from all over the world. So at Rosie's we don't only value our guests, but we also value the environment and therefore we've put a few practices in place which everybody participates in and it already starts like when you arrive, um, you'll see we've got some bags like, uh, hanging next to the front door which people can take to the beach when they go for a beach walk, we encourage that they pick up the plastic. Um, uh, we have a grey water system so that means we pump back our shower water and our washing machine water into the toilet so we actually never flush our toilets with drinking water. The um, uh, excess water because obviously you use less water for the toilets than for um, uh, what you, comes out of your washing machine. We pump that uh, into our garden which works perfectly fine. Then we even collect water in the showers from, with buckets as an extra measurement to water some more plants. Therefore we've still got a beautiful green garden here in Tableview on the dunes. Um, other things we've put in place is a recycling uh, procedure in the kitchen and all the guests are actually very familiar with this because a lot of my guests come from Europe and they actually feel extra at home because we've got these um, measurements or procedures. We also try and conserve as much energy as possible so we don't leave lights on, we don't leave TVs and, and radios or uh, computer screens on unnecessarily. Uh, most of my lights, especially in communal areas, are on sensors so that means that if there's no movement then lights actually switch off. So at Rosie's is uh, located very centrally. We are a 25 minute drive out of the CBD Cape Town. Uh, we are situated right at the beach, just one street up, like 100 meters, which is ideal for the kite surfers. They can just walk down to the beach, pump up their kites and off they go. watching the kite surfers on the beach. We had an early start meandering towards Franschhoek, where we enjoyed a decadent picnic in the perfectly manicured rose garden at Borschendel's wine estate. The carefully curated spread was utterly decadent and the perfect start to our day. Hi guys, so we're at the Boschendal Estate and we're about to enjoy their vegan picnic in this beautiful setting of their rose garden. You have the mountains in the background, there's flowers all around us and birds chirping in the trees. It's literally the perfect place to have a picnic. They have put together the most amazing different food items for the picnic today. We have this baby potato salad, it's got this fresh herb marinade around it. There's some homemade pickled cucumbers and there's this lemon acha. They've also got, and no picnic would be right without it, some homemade hummus, it looks divine. There's also this roasted cauliflower and chickpea sort of mix. It looks incredible. And here is a marinated mushroom and aubergine salad. I mean, come on, that is perfect for a picnic. And then here's some fresh vegetable crudités with this kind of marinade dressing. I think that looks incredible too. So fresh on such a hot day. And they have these freshly baked baguettes 
They smell so good. Fresh bread is always one of my favorite things to eat. And then they've paired that with these blocks of vegan cheese. Perfect. Literally, what a picnic. And then at the end, just as something to round everything off, there is this homemade vegan chocolate mousse. <laughs> I can't wait to have this, but we have to get through all the rest of the food first. So I think I'm gonna start pulling some things out now and we'll tuck in. We've had such an amazing time enjoying this decadent vegan picnic here in the Bosch Gardens this afternoon. But I have this chocolate mousse to finish, so I'm going to tuck in and I'll see you guys later. After enjoying the most spectacular picnic I've ever had, it was time to set off towards a favoured activity for anyone visiting the Western Cape. Wine tasting, of course. As luck would have it, we picked a magnificent estate where not only was I treated to a beautiful wine tasting, but I also learnt about the vegan winemaking process. I also did a spot of shopping in Fairview's deli shop where I picked up some of their own brand of vegan cheese and some lovely, locally produced jams and pickles to pair with it. Hi Neil. Hi, how are you? Good, thanks to you. Good, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much. It's so lovely to be here today. So Neil, can you tell me a little bit about the Fairview Farm and about the vineyards that we're standing by right now? Mm, sure. So Fairview, we're situated just outside of Paul or in the, the Seder Paul area. Um, we're a third generation family owned farm, farm um, owned by Charles Beck. And um, with regards to our farm and our vineyards, we um, have over 450 hectares of our own vineyard, which we farm sure. ourselves. <laughs> so quite a bit, quite a handful. Um, not just here in Paul, but we have uh, vineyards in Darling. We have a farm in Stellenbosch and in Malmesbury and Swartland as well. So we, we focus on, or we, we take a lot of time in identifying to plant the correct vineyard in the, in, in the correct area as well. So, for example, all of our most of our white wine will come from our Darling vineyards because it's there's a good maritime influence, better for the white wine production. And the Paul area is hotter, so we focus more on Shiraz, Pinotage, um, and some other Rhone varietals. So, it's, for us, it's just about making sure that the right vine is planted in the correct soil to best showcase the the, the characteristics of that particular variety. So I believe that the Fairview brand and all the wine that you produce is vegan. 
Can you take me back to when you transitioned into creating wines that are vegan and can you just tell us a bit about uh, what the difference is between producing wine that isn't vegan and wine that is? Yeah, so we've, we've actually got quite a, quite a long history with regards to our wines being uh, vegan uh, or vegan friendly. So since our 2009 vintage, we've, all of our, our wines have been, have been all, all vegan friendly. So, sure, so it's a long time already. So no, definitely. And it's, uh, it's, it's something that, again, was, was important for us and, and, and to do. And with regards to the wine production process, so the big difference between non-vegan wines and, and vegan wines is, is the, the additives that you use in certain parts of the winemaking process. So your old traditional non-vegan products were all animal based. Okay. So, so things, for example, like gelatin or things like um, even products uh, produced from egg whites or even funny things like uh, fish bladders. Or fish bladders. Are <laughs> <laughs> so again, so you know, those, are those old traditional kind of products that they used, um, the reason for the use of those products was you use them in the fining and the clarification process to, 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 to rid the wine of kind of unwanted particles and, and proteins and things. So it's pretty much about cleaning the wine. Okay. From a, you know, even from a color, you know, some, you know, your wines can be cloudy a bit, but also in removing some astringent um, kind of flavor profile. So there's different, there's different uses for different products. So, but the old animal based products have now been replaced with um, plant-based products, so for example, we use everything from pea and potato proteins that we use for, for certain parts. Um, we use a, a clay product called bentonite, which, which is also. Okay. Um, so we've transitioned completely away from, from all animal-based And is that products. on all your wines? All of our wines from top to bottom, so from a entry-level, um, let's say, retail-orientated wine, all the way up to our single vineyard limited uh, release wine. So, um, yeah, from top to bottom. Oh, that's Severe has, has always been to to manage your your, your footprint as, as best possible. So, you know, there there are various ways to um, to try and farm as as less intensive as, as possible, if I can put it that way. The lighter sort of footprint. The lighter the footprint, the better. The, you know, the, we. We, we strive towards to to impact the, the the farm and the soil and the environment as, as little as, as possible. So, you know, small little things that we that we do. We we don't try to over manicure our vineyards. We um, with the the cover crop that we plant in between the, the vines, we um, we don't we don't spray them. Uh, often, what happens is that you you'll, you'll plant your cover crop and then it's you know after winter you you, know, you can spray them. Um, we also we. We, we take an implement that's called in Afrikaans a bossy slana, which pretty much just bossy slana. Bossy slana, so it just kind of breaks the, the cover crop. So again, just to keep it, to keep the cover crop there, to keep the soil as healthy as possible. And again, also, you know, sometimes you you have to intervene a bit, but again, as mindfully as possible, spray if you have to. But again, we, we try and limit our, our footprint as much as possible um, for for obvious environmental re um, reasons. Sure. Yeah. Well, with so much vineyard under your belt, I think it's really remarkable that you've taken the stance and that you are practicing, you know, these sorts of uh, methods of uh, wine production, you know, and trying to to maintain that natural, um, that sort of mat that natural philosophy. My name is Rita and I will introduce you to our Broken Barrel. Broken Barrel, that's yes. an interesting name. A beautiful a once off blend and we're never going to repeat the same style again. You're never going to make more? Never the same style again, that means it's a once off blend and we only do 15 barrels of a kind. Only salad or available. 
So sure. Enjoy this. So this is a special, a special tasting, a special glass of wine. Special for you, <laughs> yes. So we only produce like 15 barrels, which means it is plus minus five and a half to six thousand bottles oh. of a batch. Very, very limited edition, and it's only Salador available. So this batch is made out of pinotas and durif this time, and the beautiful aromas of blackcurrant notes and a touch of spiciness on your palate. A touch of spice. Touch of spice. So enjoy this. Yeah, that's wonderful. You knew that I was. <laughs> <laughs> you knew I was going to smile after tasting that. It's a beautiful blend, and at the back of each label, we also state the barrel has been broken, so we're never going to repeat this again. So if you like it, take it with. Hello! I'm super excited to be in your restaurant today. I have been waiting so long to try your food. Um, what are you going to make this morning? So, I think one of our most popular is the Dark Side Burger. Um, is that the one with Peri Peri? Peri Peri, uh, deep fried uh, chicken style battered burger. Uh, okay, so we, we're going to use some king oysters, uh, not king oysters, we're going to use some oysters today, uh, some grey oysters. Oh, that guy's beautiful. And we're going to slowly pan fry them down for you and then we'll batter them up and add some seared pineapple, some peri peri and some kale slaw to that mix on a charcoal bun. Oh my gosh, that sounds like And maybe just throw in some loaded fries, how's that sound? <laughs> <laughs> okay, the perfect burger. <laughs> Alright, cool. Can we'll I get come to and it. have a look? Yeah, of course. Cool. Come around. Right, so oyster mushrooms going straight in the pan, just like that. Don't need to do anything else with it other than that for the moment. And then weight it down with a secondary pan. Basically, it's called Russian dressing, so it's a form of a pink sauce that we make here with mustard, onion, sriracha, mayonnaise. So we're just adding that to it. You can also just, if you don't like spiciness of sriracha, you can just add uh, mayo. Right, so that's what we're looking for. It's starting to saute down quite nicely. A little bit, we wanna cook it quite slowly. We're just gonna add a little bit of lemon or lime to that. Just a touch, citrus is always good when cooking. Whoa, not that much. <laughs> when cooking with these things. Just breaks through flavor profile. All right, and then we're just gonna add that pan back on, and I'm just turning it down to a medium heat. Let's give it a touch more oil there. Right, so we're working with about 100 grams of mushroom here. That's a good portion for us growing vegans.
Bianca, loaded jalapeno fries. I hope you're hungry. Oh my gosh. And two dark side burgers. All for me. I hope that Durban poison's working for you. <laughs> That's a feast. <laughs> this is more than a feast. Oh my gosh. All right, let me get you guys some plates. You guys do your thing. This is incredible. Mushrooms, coleslaw, cheese, burger, loaded fries. Oh my God, I'm so good. Guys, look at the layers on these burgers. There is bun, kale slaw, pineapple, burger, like deep fried, delicious, crispy mushroom burger, peri peri sauce, multi cheese and then the top of the bun like i don't know what else to say this is incredible <laughs> i don't even know how i'm gonna wrap my mouth around this guy <laughs> that's how oh my gosh it is so good as you can see from the sauce all over my face. It's crispy. That spice is perfect, especially for us coming from Durban. The crunch of the slaw, which also sort of like cuts it. This is amazing. I'm really sad to put my burger down for a second, but look at these loaded fries. Like, this is Table Mountain on a plate. I don't know how I'm gonna get all of this deliciousness onto one fry, but I'll make like a little, here we go. Here's my little like fry mountain. Oh my gosh. I have an absolute mountain of this incredible food to get through. So I'm gonna tuck in and I'll see you guys later. about what to do while staying in their city and they'll almost certainly point you in the direction of Lion's Head. After all the food that we've been eating, a hike seemed like a fantastic opportunity to stretch our legs and take in the exceptional view the mountain top provides. The experience was quite literally breathtaking.